we are on the home stretch for 2022 and I want to see if I can squeeze out another couple of videos before New Year's. Uh, let's see if we can make a shorter one than usual too uh, with this uh, range of Arkham City figures by McFarlane Toys. And uh, yeah, let's start off with the big fella here, Batman in his Arkham City variation. And yeah, it is a variation of course because the Arkham Asylum figure, which I also bought as well, um, yeah, it's it's slightly different. I, I wish I could get it out and compare it now. Might do it later, but uh, that's the thing I've just remembered. I have bought uh, McFarlane figures ever since they got the license. However, this may actually be the first time I've opened one. I said in an old video that I really that I really like the uh, the look of these figures. However, I was always frustrated by how scattershot the release schedule seems to be. What is it? It's always like really obscure characters, really edgy characters. It's never uh, sets of things. Now, eventually that changed and, you know, I'm not going to say uh, anyone at McFarlane Toys or DC or whatever, you know, ever saw my videos. I'm not going to say that. I'm saying it's a good, positive coincidence that they're now doing sets of figures like this. I mean, it started before this, obviously. Um, the Suicide Squad, directed by James Gunn. Love that film. And uh, I've been meaning to get that set, but... I don't know, there's a part of me that thinks, oh, do I really want to have that set of toys as much as I love that film? I loved Arkham City, I love the Arkham games, that's why I have these. But, uh, sorry, I'm just going ahead of it. I'm getting some bits and pieces from the back here first. This is how you know I'm really meaning it. It's all there. Oh, it's, uh, so we've got a stand, we've got a sort of trading card thing going on here. A data file that says on the back. Put that aside for the moment. And so yeah, we've got we've got Batsy still in the blister in the in the plastic. Ooh. It's gonna be easier. Scissors gonna be easier. Gonna be right back. Uh, I should really get some of those little snippers, but I just haven't got around to buying them. So when it's a it's a set of figures from a property, from a particular story like Arkham City. They're going to take a chance. They're going to take the opportunity to include a builder figure with the uh, suicide with the Suicide Squad. It was um, uh, King Shark. I'm recording this in the first week of December. And it's been a few weeks since the passing of Kevin Conroy. So many would say he was the definitive Batman for at least a couple of generations of fans. It was definitely a reason I uh, started playing the games and the reason why those games are so good. I mean, they've got... I'm not sure if you can see it on camera here. There's a Asylum, Arkham Asylum set up. Uh, there, Arkham City is in the middle, and then behind the boxes, it's Arkham Knight. And those are all from the DC Direct, DC Collectibles uh, range, when um, that was still a thing. Yeah, there we go. That's actually very impressive. I almost think it is an improvement over the Asylum release. Again, I have to dig through storage to be able to... Um, to be able to make the comparison, but I'll do that. I'll do that later. I'm probably not going to end up doing so, but I want to try to breeze through this as quickly as possible. Maybe less chatter, Pontip. Ugh. We'll see. I like the base, although it's a bit tight. It's not flat. It's not flush. Uh, he's got the uh, uh, grapnel, uh, grapnel grappling gun. Uh, I'll put that in his hand there. I do like this. That head sculpt is fantastic. The detail on him is is very cool. Where's that from? It feels looks like a bit of fluff. Did it pick up from somewhere here? I will say I think there is one detail that might be off. Yeah. <laughs> I thought so. So this is the Arkham City version. It's a variation on the Arkham Asylum suit, although they 
will look identical uh, from a very sort of um, quick glance, but there are subtle differences. For instance, his uh, his uh, gauntlets, the the forearm pieces have extra detail on them, like, like little bat computer type stuff on his on his forearms, and also the shape of the pouches on his utility belt are not quite rectangular like they are on the Asylum version. These are rectangular pouches on his utility belt, whereas the Arkham City one, they're actually on a slight angle, sort of uh, not quite a V shape, but they're on a they're on a minor angle. So it's it, this looks like this does appear to be a reuse of the Asylum version, but uh, you know what? It's still if you missed that first one, this is still very impressive. It also has the added benefit of being part of a builder figure range, and uh, yeah, we have two legs here. But we'll set those aside for now and we'll talk about those a little later. But uh, as far as uh, beginnings go, yeah, don't mind that. Don't mind that at all. I will be honest, the, the, the comparisons between what McFarlane do with their packaging and what Hasbro are doing feel very different now. That's a lot of space. Hmm. Anyway. Next one, I think I'll save him for a little bit. Let's go to the bottom and we will look at the penguin. You know what? I really like this rendition of uh, Cobblepot. Um, yeah, really works, really works for me. Sort of, um, sort of sprinklings of a Guy Ritchie mobster that, that work really well. Yeah, that's uh, that's a lot of empty space there. <laughs> Let's get stuff out. I didn't I didn't finish what I was saying before. Um, yeah, sad news about um, Kevin Conroy. He was my absolute favourite, and yeah, I kind of wish I got to meet him at a convention or something. That's that's how I seem to meet all my childhood heroes at the moment. All the people whose work I love. Oh, there we go. Let's put this in his hands first. Wait. Oh. No. His top hat doesn't come off. No, they've, they've, um, unless I'm missing something, no, the top hat does not seem to come off. It is a separate piece. Yep, no, I don't think it comes off. And you know what? I don't want to force it, but uh, yeah. And I gotta admit, a much better gangster rendition than uh, whatever Colin Farrell was putting on. You know, I enjoyed the Batman just fine, but I think I enjoyed it more than I liked it. And a lot of it has to do with the whole taking Batman villains and making them realistic has just killed it for me, really. Let's put them on a stand. I think these are the perfect diameter uh, bases for this size action figure. You know those ones that NECA sell? I think they're slightly too large. I think by about two centimeters, I think. And I think the ones that I have, the clear things that I buy for my Marvel Legends figures, I think they might be like a centimeter or half a centimeter too small. That's, this here is, is like perfect. I think this is the same size as what some of the uh, uh, DC Direct figures have. But yeah, no, that's, that's very cool. The one I want to do next is Catwoman. And this one's very nice indeed. So you might be asking, if I've already got these figures, then why do I want to get the McFarlane ones? Because I actually think the McFarlane figures are really good. There's a curiosity I have about them, and how they compare to the DC Direct ones. There's also the benefit of the Builder figure. Uh, I was fortunate to get the deluxe figures like Mr. Freeze, uh, Killer Croc, uh, Clayface, as well as the Titan Joker. Unfortunately, a couple of these are broken. Uh, so, you know, I, I got them for absolutely piss-weak peanuts prices. I missed out 
on certain figures from from some of these ranges. And honestly, I can't afford the DC Direct um, versions anymore. Since that company went out of business, oh, since that company was folded by Warner Brothers, let's put that aside. Everything they produced has just skyrocketed. For instance, a Batman animated series figure, uh, which might have gone for like anywhere between $30, $40, possibly even $50 retail once upon a time, now goes for hundreds of dollars because, you know, that's how, that's how the aftermarket works, unfortunately. People are greedy as fuck. Ooh. There we go. Ooh. Yeah, this is nice. Yeah, there we go. The detail is, is rather brilliant. I mean, if there's one thing you can trust from McFarlane figures is that uh, there's going to be a lot of detail on them. I mean, that's the reason why they do all those really ultra-detailed, edgy uh, comic book characters that no one really cares about. As well as Spawn, over and over and over and over and over again. There we go. I'll put an insert where I compare the McFarlane versions with the DC Direct versions. The McFarlane figures are larger. Um, they're more comparable to... I think they're more comparable to NECA figures rather than Marvel Legends. Yeah. Oh, there's that one. Held off the list. And the final figure in the box is Ra's al Ghul. Now, there has been a lot of sort of back and forth about the pronunciation. Um, actual Persian speakers say that Ra's al Ghul means feather of the demon <laughs> it's meant to be head of the demon as according to the creators but um yep and that's gonna piss some people off but you know what whatever it is it is kind of weird that you know you would pick a persian name and then you know it not being accurate let's just let's just put it out there yeah, one of the weirder performances in the Arkham City game, I think. A little uh, appropriately bombastic, but not quite on the same level as uh, David Warner's uh, very sort of, um, very sort of uh, upper crust portrayal in the um, animated series. David Warner, also someone that passed away, I think, this year as well. He was mainly known... For a couple of roles, a few roles, sorry, in Star Trek. Getting a bit grim in this, uh, in this video. Let's, let's try not be that. Oh, I forgot. Oh, nice sword. Yeah, not very brittle at all. That's actually quite nice. I gotta be honest, I don't miss the crinkling plastic. This is not ASMR time. I, I will admit, out of all the figures, uh, Raish here is um, seemingly my least favourite. He actually doesn't feel as substantial as the others, but also the, um, the paint on his face is a little bit lacking. The tattoos on his arms, I'm digging. Yeah, they're not quite glowy green like the uh, DC Direct one. I mean, in the game, they glow because of him, was it powering up or being in the Lazarus pit? And there he is. The head of the demon. That's not bad. I like the armor. I like the detail on the armor. It, that head just feels off, and I feel like it's to do with the lackluster paint. Everything else looks very well sculpted. Actually, his, his torso is soft and feels a little cavernous. It's not a rubber suit over a solid torso. There's It's empty in there, and I think that's meant to help with some articulation. You've got articulation on Bruce here, and you can see a very solid, solid line. Same with uh, Selena at the ribcage there. 
But yeah, I think there's there's something very considered. This is why I do like the McFarlane figures. Some things are better than others, I think. So there we have the four characters for this uh, Arkham City wave of figures. The wonderful thing they've done here is that it only takes four figures to assemble the included builder figure. And that's all we're gonna do right now. Just looking the sleeveless vest here on um, Solomon Grundy, that's, that's who we're building. It's not just nicely textured, there's actually some sort of a variant finish that I think you might be able to get on camera there. It's nicely done. I'm, I'm impressed that it isn't just a flat color or a flat texture. There's something a little more considered with how they've uh, uh, dirtied up his vests. I, I think that's I think it's rather fascinating. But yeah, so we'll let's start with the body here. We've got a couple of legs. Do these lock or do they do they what's going on? Is it just a pressure fit for these? Ah, let's put the arms in. The It's not a ratchet, it's should I have put the vest on first? Yeah. Yeah, the, the fact that I could take those off is actually quite um, amusing. And you know what, I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, I think I'm slightly disappointed so far. Okay, I'm getting ahead of myself, but there we have Solomon Grundy. Born on a Monday, uh, something, something, I don't remember the rest, but there we go. Here's why I'm a little disappointed. He's barely any taller than, than Raish. Yeah, he doesn't feel as big as he should be. If I were to get Killer Croc from the DC Direct DC Collectibles range and put him here, that that's massive. You know what, give me a moment. I recall him being a lot bigger as a character. I mean, I'll point out one thing right now. His um, his chest doesn't seem to open like the uh, DC one unless I'm unless I'm missing something. Yeah, I feel like he was meant to be a character much larger, maybe twice the size, at at least as he was depicted in in the game. Yeah, larger. Yes, but not significantly. Overall, I'm actually kind of pleased. These figures are really nice. These, like I said, these are the first McFarlane figures I've opened, despite the fact I've bought other McFarlane figures in the last couple of years. I just never got around to opening them or having space for them. And I'll say now, I don't know if I've got space for these. I, I'm going to have to do a bit of rearranging. If you missed out on the DC Direct figures, I would recommend the McFarlane figures. Uh, I mean, they are going back and re-releasing uh, stuff from DC Direct now as well, including animated series stuff. Little minor nitpicks of accuracy and, and whatnot, but considering the price, yeah, no, they're, they're, they're actually really bloody good. Thank you so much for joining me on this video. Um, I hope to have a couple more before the end of the year. Uh, and uh, until then, my only problem now is I gotta rearrange the shelf to see where they go. Catch you on the next one.